to Easy 3 Sport Production. I'm your host, Suttles. And before we get started, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that sub button. Make sure you click that like button. YouTube always likes it. And be sure to leave your comments in the comment section. I want to hear what you got to think about this next subject. So without further ado, let's get it. One time for the win. Woo! Let's go. The New York football giants are four and one. Let's go. This 2022 season has been it's just surprise. It's just surprises. We came out, we beat the Tennessee Titans week one. Then we come through and we beat the Panthers. We put up a very good game against the Cowboys. We ended up losing. Then we redeem ourselves. We go ahead and we beat the Bears. And then when nobody gave us a chance, going out to London, facing A.A. Ron. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. You done messed up. You really thought that the Giants were just going to lay down when they were down 14? Get out of here. Get out of here, man. This is a different team. They are built different. This is not the same Giants squad that we've been seeing for the past five years. When they get down by seven, they get down by ten, and then it's like, oh, woe is me. Oh, we're just going to end up losing. Let's not try and lose by 20 points and yaddy, 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 Joe Judge. No, this team is built different. They were down by 14. They cut it to 10 by halftime. They ended up coming back and tying the game. And mind you, they are doing all of this without a starting wide receiver. All of their wide receivers that Daniel Jones is throwing to are practice squad players. Davis Sills has been cut and uh He's been picked up, he's been cut, he's been picked up, he's been cut at least three times by the Giants. Richie James is not, he's been on the practice squad. They signed up some guy named Mark Johnson. They signed him up on Friday. Daniel Jones is throwing to these guys and making it work. I'm going to get into Daniel Jones a little bit later. But we have to understand the ramifications of how good this coaching squad is. How good is uh, Mike Kafka? How good is Brian Dable? How good is Wink Martindale? These guys together. How good is this coaching staff? Because it's like night and day from what we've been seeing for the past couple of years. Oh my God. This, it was a lovely game. And like I said, we were down 17 to 3. Packers were up 14 points. By halftime, it was 20 to 10. But I knew that the Giants were going to win because of this. When we were down 20 to 13, and when Saquon Barkley went out with that shoulder injury, and Daniel Jones willed this team down the field on an 85 yard drive, they pinned the camera to Aaron Rodgers and you just seen the frustration and you seen how angry and how disturbed he was he couldn't get back onto the field and he had absolutely no confidence in his team to being able to withstand what was going on and that's when I knew we had him that was before Daniel Bellinger scored that touchdown I knew we had them at that point I was just hoping and praying that the game wouldn't come down to the final seconds where Aaron Rodgers has to take him down the field and end up kicking a field goal and or scoring a touchdown which we got into that scenario a little but it favored to us a little bit more but let's go out with the shout outs the New York Giants won 27 to 22 they scored 17 unanswered points. They held the Green Bay Packers offense to zero donut in the second half. We spotted them two points because they took a safety towards the end just to wind the clock down. But everything has been shown that this is just a second half team. They go in there with the adjustments and they make it work. On the defensive end, Aaron Rodgers was killing us with the bubble screens and the quick passes, but yet we started to get up on to him. We started to get up on those wide receivers, making them very uncomfortable. We only got one set, well, basically two sacks towards the end of the game, but we got one sack, then, um, Dexter Lawrence got it, and 
for everybody out here who's trying to say that Kayvon Thibodeau is a bust, y'all do not know what y'all are looking at. I said this from the beginning. I said Kayvon Thibodeau is going to have that Micah Parsons type feel to what he is doing in his rookie season. What does that mean? Micah Parsons' stat wasn't that great in towards the until he got towards the middle of the season. But him being out there really brought a presence and other guys became better from it. Kayvon Thibodeau just being on the field, Dexter Lawrence has only had around three to four sacks throughout his entirety, like each season that he's been with us. It's only been two, three, four sacks at the most. He's gotten three sacks, and we're only in game five. Why is that? Because Kayvon Thibodeau is getting on that edge so damn fast that it's forcing quarterbacks to step up. And that's what happened with Aaron Rodgers. That's how Dexter Lawrence got that, got that sack. I just can't wait until Leonard Williams, Ojolari, and Kayvon are all on the field together because that defensive line is going to be a beast. And that is going to be one of the strong suits to this defense. But Wink Martindale knows how to scheme. He knows how to plan. He knows how to get into the quarterback's head. Xavier McKinney, back down that ball. Game time. This is what we do. Now let's go to... Two of the guys that is carrying this team. Let's start with Saquon Barkley. He is an absolute monster. He's an absolute beast. He had 70 yards rushing, 36 yards receiving. You seen that he did not want to come out after that shoulder injury, but yet they forced him to come out. He was out for about, I think, two drives, but he came out, shot right back out, and he made his presence felt. Right now, he is 100% the top-notch guy for comeback player of the year. He's going to really make a case for being offensive player of the year. Now, I don't now a lot of people are saying MVP. I don't think that that's going to happen. This quarterback league, all it takes is one guy to throw over for 5,000 yards. If uh, Saquon Barkley goes for over 2,000 yards from scrimmage or even more, 2,200, then maybe we can talk about that. But not going to get into that. Now, let's get to the cream of the crop. Daniel Jones, okay? I have been on the Daniel Jones bandwagon. I had said that I was going to give him three years, and within those three years, he has not shown me that he deserved the contract. When they didn't give him that fifth-year option, I totally agreed. I said that he's going to have to work to see if he can get that contract. And I said it's going to be a lot of things that's going to be in his way. He's dealing with injuries. He's dealing with not having wide receivers. He's dealing with a new system. Now, what I can say is this. I do not know if they are going to keep Daniel Jones or if they're going to let him walk. I do not know. Now, but I do know that this is my favorite DJ game, even better than his very first game with the New York Giants. This game really showed exactly what DJ is as a quarterback and what he can be. He is not going to be a spectacular and elite type quarterback. What he is is a quarterback of moment. That's what he is. Do not expect him to kill you throughout the entirety of the game. He is a quarterback of moments. When it's big time moments, he's going to step up and he's going to do what is needed for the team to win. This man threw for over 70% of his passes, and especially in that one drive without Saquon, he was 100%. He was On a bum ankle, he got a bloody hand, but yet he is still sacrificing himself for the team. And that type of energy just goes throughout the entirety of the team. If they see that that quarterback is giving his all, everybody's going to give their all. And for everybody out there that's saying he's a bum, he can't do this, he can't do that, you really don't take into account what the other players see. Leadership by example. He may not be the best quarterback in the league right now, but I will take him as a hell of a leader over majority of those quarterbacks. That's what I can definitely say. I He may be ranked in between uh, 15 and 22 as a quarterback, but as a leader, he is top notch in this league. He is not, uh, he, he's tough. You're not going to see him sitting out 
too many games unless it's extremely serious. This guy knows how to lead a team. He's everything that we want. We just got to see if he can progress with Dayball. I have seen some very good progressions. He still has a lot of work to do because he had some bum-ass coaches for the past four years. So it's very hard to get over those types of things. Now, I'm rooting for DJ. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to give him a contract right now, but I am rooting for him, and he is moving in the right direction. But... This is all. This is my all-time favorite DJ game. He showed everything. He showed the grit. He showed the determination. He showed the leadership. He showed that he can step up when the moment is needed. He showed that he can lay back when the moment is needed, and he just gets the W. And that's what we're looking for: a quarterback that can get us the W. We are four and one, Giants Nation. Four and one. Let's get ready for the Baltimore Ravens. For everybody that was thinking that that may have been an L, the Giants are serious. And the league is going to take notice. But until next time, I'm out.